And that means that we are live once again. Grateful Chef here, Eric Eisenbud. So grateful that you guys came to another episode of Cooking in the Grateful Chef Kitchen with Eric Eisenbud. That's me. Shout out to the hour, mine and yours, producer, camerawoman, wind beneath my wings, Lynn, who you will hear her voice, but you will never see her. Maybe. <laughs> and joining us once again, dear friend, my tiny but mighty Sabrina States in the house for, you know, three sauces, one protein. It's going to be really cool. Another great, really quick um, kind of thing you can do. I'm doing three sauces just to show you the versatility, you know, of what we're doing. So we are actually, as you probably already know, we're doing piccata, we're doing marsala, we're doing franchise. There's a lot of ingredients that are the same. So I figured, you know, why just do one? Why don't we do all three? Um, so we're going to talk about it. Piccata, is a, these are all classic sauces too. Italian, French, all over the globe. So we are going to travel through food, as always, together, uh, making these awesome dishes. So we have piccata. Piccata main ingredients are butter, lemon, stock, I'm using chicken stock, and capers, okay? We have marsala, which is obviously use of marsala wine. We have mushrooms, stock, and butter. And then we're gonna do franchise, which is lemon, white wine, stock, and butter. So you can see they all use butter and they all use stock. So we have, we broke out the massive giant block of butter and we've got in here I've got uh, chicken stock so uh, you can use any stock you want you know I chose to use chicken because the protein that we're using today is pork now these recipes you can do with chicken easily you just the key with the meat is and I'm going to get it and I'm going to show it to you um, is you got to pound it out it's got to be thin um, for these recipes you don't want to so even when you do chicken breast you might want to butterfly it and then pound it out but that's what I do in here I was I found these great uh, actually they were bone-in pork chops the t-bones so I took off the uh, tenderloin part save that for later and I just took the bones off and I pounded it with beautiful marbling in this pork so I said yep that's what we're gonna do so we're doing pork today again you can do you can do chicken you can even do fish. If you have a nice firm white fish, you can do any of these recipes with fish. Yes, Lynn? And so far in your audience, we've got... Paul Taboni. I haven't seen Paul yet. All right. Paul will uh, be here. Uh, we've got you, Dad. Hello, Dad. He said hi. Thanks, guys. Todd. Hello, Todd. Your brother. It's a family affair. Yes. All right. Uh, I, I was told a lot of people were busy this past week and are completely exhausted, so... I don't know. We've also got Caesar. He's a nice buddy. All right, Caesar, as good as a brother as any. Yes, uh, Nino. Of course. More family. Nino. Yes. Uh, David Lester said aloha, just thinking about pork masala yesterday. Mmm. Mm, fantastic. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. It's going to be awesome. So, again, we went over piccata, marsala, franchise. Other ingredients we're using flour and egg. So, two of them the piccata and the marsala. Simply get the, the meat gets dusted in seasoned flour. Real simple. The franchise, which makes it franchise, is it gets dusted in flour, then it gets dipped in egg. So it's a real light, eggy kind of batter. Really great. I love it. That batter then soaks up all the sauce. It's cool. So we're going to do, we have flour, we have egg, salt and pepper for seasoning. We're using some olive oil. Everything's going to get garnished with, uh, with parsley. Great aromatic, I think it's underrated. Used to be just, you know, sprinkle it on the plate kind of thing. I use it in things and it's really great. Um, doing shallots with the franchise, because it is French for God's sakes. And of course the pork, I'm serving it with pasta. Today we're doing an orecchetta because I want the little cups to capture the sauce. You can do it with spaghetti, linguine, any kind of shape that you want. That's just the shape that I chose today. And we are having a classic salad, uh, Italian, made known to me from the Belmont Tavern in Belleville, New Jersey. 
Uh, it's simple escarole, nice bitter lettuce, some nice crispy cold um, radishes. And I made a real simple uh, vinaigrette, didn't even emulsify it. It's vegetable oil, it's oregano, some garlic, and some red wine vinegar. That's it. We're going to put it over. It's going to be incredible. What does it mean that you didn't emulsify it? Well, usually when you make a vinaigrette, a classic vinaigrette, because oil and water don't mix. So you need an emulsifying agent. So what happens is the uh, fat surrounds the emulsifying agent and makes it able to mix with the water-based ingredient. So um, you can see here how the oil is sitting, uh, the vinegar is sitting at the bottom. So that's not emulsified. So emulsification is um, bringing together two things that don't normally mix. So sometimes you use mustard, powdered mustard, or regular mustard, and it creates an emulsion. Oh. Um, and also when you slowly whisk in the oil, a little bit at a time, you're emulsifying it. And once it becomes emulsified, then you can add the oil quicker, and it just becomes, it stays in one, you know, it, it wouldn't be separated like that. So, you know, classic. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this menu. Okay, while you're doing that, we've got Terry Ann Fink, and she said it sounds yummy. Hey, and Terry. We have Mark Sennett. I saw Lisa Pashoda out there. Oh, my buddies. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks. I'm really grateful you guys joined me here every week on The Grateful Chef. Uh, a lot of people, and what's cool about the live streaming, you catch it live if you can. If not, it's always posted. I put it at the top on The uh, Grateful Chef with our guys in my group. So you can always go back and, you know, typically I get more views after the live, but, um, you know, hopefully that balance will change. You know, we want thousands. We want thousands. Tell all your friends, join the group, check in our Facebook lives, you know, share the love, share the word. Uh, go on to my uh, YouTube channel, like and subscribe to that, and join and follow me on Instagram. Always posting content. It's a whole lot of fun. You get to see uh, what's going on in the crazy culinary world of my brain. So it's awesome. So again, we'll go over the ingredients real quick. Um, again, the two most common denominators are stock and butter. We put that over here. And don't worry, I will not use that entire block of butter tonight. Unless, you know, I'm really crazy. Okay, so we have, of course, lemons. So I've sliced lemons. We're going to put them in the pan. We've got uh, mushrooms for the, I have to check because uh, it's hard to keep track for the marsala. Marsala, mushrooms, shallots for the front chase. We have capers for the piccata. And of course, a lot of chopped parsley for uh, garnishing and seasoning and all that. So I'm going to move these all over here so I can use them on the fly. And what else do we have? We have in here, what I did was, and I want to encourage anybody or everybody to buy one of these. You know, single use gadget, but not really. You can do limes in here. You know, I've even um, done tea bags. You know, when I want to get, you know, squeeze all the tea out, you put them in here. It's great. Uh, this is a lemon squeezer. Used to use a reamer, but what's cool about this is it catches the seeds and you get every bit of juice. So you cut the lemon in half and you put it cut side down and you squeeze it in, it turns inside out and you get a ton of juice. Um, so that's what I did here. I put fresh lemon juice in here just so it's easier to put in the pan. We can cook on the fly. Leave those lemons there. And uh, that's it. So a little bit under the weather. Please bear with me, but I am here cooking because I wouldn't miss it. All right. Uh, so before you move on, we've yes. got uh, Nino and his mom's there too. Oh, so, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, Hopefully we got good news for you tomorrow, Nino. I mean, on Friday. Yes. And big meeting. Yeah. Chris Manning, glad to see you both doing well. Always on point. We've got Chris Fife, uh, Tanya Forrester. My Hi, Tanya. Always my favorite comments on our kitchen. That kitchen is amazing. Nice. And we got to get you in here, girl. And that that handsome dude, that would be you. Um, 
makes the show even better. Uh, Dante Rascali, um, he thinks you should host private dinners. We would love to do that as well. We'd love to. We have Efren, and we oh, also have dear friend Efren. Um, Francesca Messina, watching from Greensboro, North, North Carolina. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Keep on going. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you very much. All right. So, should we get to the stove? Yes. Fantastic. So Lynn's going to move the camera over here. And we're going to get cooking. I'll turn the water up. So that's ready to go. And let me th just explain a little bit what we have here so far. So since I'm doing three sauces, a lot of pork, I have cooked some already. The, the two that are just dusted in flour, so the piccata and the marsala, dusted them in flour, seasoned flour here. I put a little bit of oil, vegetable oil, a little bit of butter in the pan, heated it up till it was sizzling, I, I, and, and I cooked them maybe a couple minutes on each side, flipped them over, and I, they're in a 100 degree oven right now just holding. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do that, I'm going to show you how to do the franchise, a little more uh, involved, so I wanted to show you guys that. But the reason why I did that is, and I am very fond of this, this is called the fond. It is those bits that stick to the bottom of the pan. That is pure flavor. So um, you want to make sure that you use that. I may pour off some of this oil because I don't need that much to do the next steps. So I think, in fact, that I'm going to do that. I have a bowl right here, heat proof. So I'm just going to pour off some of the oil, make sure I don't pour off the fond. And it's interesting because I'm using a couple of different types of pans here. So I have two aluminum or stainless steel, and then I have my cast iron skillet just because I wanted pans that are all the same size. So I'm going to turn the fire up on these. Not too high. Just want to get it hot again. Get those going. And I'm going to turn the pan up on this. And so this is going to be our franchise. Yes, dear. Um, question from before on parsley. Yes. So something about uh, from Lisa. She said, I always use Italian flat leaf parsley. What is curly parsley used in? Okay, so my preference is the curly parsley. But the curly parsley to me has a little bit more vibrant aromatic flavor. So I like to use the curly parsley. A little harder to handle because it's, you know, it's not all flat, obviously, but um, I just bunch it up, run my knife through it, chop it down. I just think it's a nice brighter green and a, and a nicer flavor. That's just my preference, you know, definitely, definitely just my preference. All right, so in this pan, this is going to be our, um, I need to see the sign, the franchise. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the pan, a little vegetable oil, and I'll put a little piece of butter. I have some other butter here. I'm going to just get rid of it and use it. And I'm going to let that start to sizzle. Milk fats in the butter start to cook and get a little bit nutty. And now I'm going to go, you're going to hear it already. So I'm going to take my fork. Before I do that, I want to do the eggs. Maybe Sabrina can do, do these for me. So we're just going to crack these eggs, get a little egg wash in here. If you want to bring it over here, you can do it. We'll do it together. Don't worry about the shells. Leave it on the counter. Nice room temperature eggs. They crack easy. They, they mix well. Get my fork. A little bit of water in here. Tiny bit. Where are you going? Okay. That's good. And yeah, I'm just whipping them up. Making a lot of noise, right, Lenny? Yep. If you're not making noise, you're not cooking. That's right. <laughs> you're not making a mess. 
You're not cooking. All right. There we go. Nice, lightly beaten. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Noisy noise is gone. Make sure we don't burn our butter. All right, so basically, again, dipping it in flour, knocking off the excess. So what's happening is the flour sticks to the meat. You've probably heard this before. And then the egg sticks to the flour. Real Maybe. simple. Can we go over there and look? Sure. First two parts of the standard breading procedure. If you were going to go further and use breadcrumbs, you would then go from the egg into the breadcrumb. So we're going to do, I think, four at a time because that's what our pan will hold. And then I'll come back and do the other two. Oop. See, it made a mess, honey. That's what our vacuum's for. That's right. All right. Knocking off the excess, putting it in the egg. And what you really want to do is you want to grab the egg and you want that to go into the pan. Pardon my reach. We'll move back over here. All right, here's what we got. You want to flip it around. Make sure it's all coated in the egg. So you're gonna. I'm gonna cook these just for a few minutes per side, and then I'm gonna take them out. Then we're gonna build our sauces. It's very simple. So when I look at that, it looks like the flour is all just washing off. No, no, the flour is definitely not washing off. See? And when you put it in the pan, you want to scoop up that egg. And you want it nice and eggy. That's going to be your batter. And you can see, if you can see in the pan, Lynn, show them in the pan, you can see that the egg is kind of forming around the pork. And we put a little more heat up on there. There we go. It looks awesome so far. And that's exactly what you want. You want that egg to kind of create a nice coating. And this is not like high heat cooking necessarily. Real gentle. This, because, because these are so thin. I have it up a little bit just to get it started. But, you know. Monitor your flames, adjust, check them out. You can always go higher, you can always go lower. Cooking on the fly. All right. Scott Kingsland said, good on you to crack those eggs on a flat surface. Thank you, Scott. Another little trick, if you are having trouble cracking your eggs right, just put a towel down. It's a single layer of a kitchen towel, and that kind of it, it, it uh, kind of make it, it makes it crack like almost exactly in half. It's a it's a good little trick, especially if you have a lot of eggs to crack. All right, so you can see here that I've got a nice little browning on this. It's exactly what you want. You're flipping it over, and again, this is going to be further cooked once we get the sauces ready. So I really just want to just want to set the egg, get a little brown color on there. So yep. that's it. All right. Now, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the sauce for the piccata. Piccata, lemon, stock, and capers. I'm going to do the piccata right in my cast iron skillet. I've got a little heat on there, and I'm going to put some lemon slices in. Oh, yeah, listen to that. That's nice. Four lemon slices. And we have Gary with us. He said hi, guys. He's hey, Gary. Late. It's early out there in California. So we got the lemon in there. Should we go for two sauces at once? Sure. Marsala. Mushrooms, key ingredient. So we're putting in mushrooms. We got the oil in there. In fact, uh, I think I've got enough. I'm going to turn it up and I want to start sauteing my mushrooms. You want to get a little color on them. Yeah, I'll let them soften up a little bit. I think that's enough. That's a beautiful thing. Flipping over my 
lemon slices. This is thickening up the fond. It's deglazing the pan a little bit. Beautiful. Mm. So that is lemon. It's it's uh, some of the flour. It is butter. It's oil. How could that be bad? Okay, we've got our mushrooms. They're starting to go. Fantastic. A beautiful thing. Turn that up a little bit. Let the water come out of the mushrooms a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take these uh, cutlets that we did with the egg, and I'm just going to pull them because we don't need them to cook any longer. I can feel by the fork that they're super tender. Awesome. You can do this with uh, you can do this with the tenderloin, the pork tenderloin, if you want. You know, just have to be real gentle when you pound it out because you don't want to break through it. I can't remember the other ones that are in the oven. How were they cooked? They were cooked just uh, with um, seasoned flour, no egg. The only one that gets egg is the prawn chase. All right. This is looking awesome. Well, all right. So next in the pan for the piccata. Flame. That's okay. We're gonna leave okay. the flame on. Is we're gonna put in some lemon juice. And you have lemon juice in the bottle? Yep. Were you paying attention? No. I was paying attention to videoing. Awesome. Um, chicken stock. Now you want to put a lot in because you're going to reduce it. So, and you want to have some sauce left. Alright, so now that there's a fair amount of liquid in here, you can turn that flame up. You want to put a fair amount in there. Okay. And then, once this starts to reduce a little bit, we're going to go put our capers in there. Right, this is looking awesome. And as, as you guys can tell, that Eric really isn't using a, a recipe. He's kind of doing it just by sight. Yeah. But when doing we it post, by sight. Yeah, but when we post it later, you will have measurements in there. That is correct. All right, so we've got our mushrooms in here. We've got and Bart going. And we've got Bart Roland saying, "Hey, from Hello, Kentucky." Bart. From where? Kentucky. All right. Where's my marsala? Aha. Over here. Okay, so we're going to put this marsala in. And as always, when we add alcohol to the pan, take it off the fire. Because that will flare up. So I am deglazing the pan with the marsala. And you can always add a little bit more later. And this is going to heat up and it's going to flame up. Beautiful. So because it was nice and hot, a lot of the alcohol burnt off before I put it back on the fire. So that's why we didn't get a huge fire. If you want to impress your friends, go for that big fire. But don't burn your house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gary just asked, have you ever tried beech mushrooms? They're one of his favorites. Beech? Yeah. Never. Never even heard of them. All right, so we got Marsala, we got the piccata. I'm letting this reduce a little bit. I'm letting the alcohol burn off on the Marsala. And the next thing I'm gonna to add to the Marsala is some stock. We're gonna let that reduce. And then we're gonna do what's called mounted with butter. That's gonna be at the end after I put the meat in there. All right, so this is looking really good. In goes the stock for the Marsala. Gonna turn up the heat. Again, this is you're building your sauce. And the way to make flavorful sauces is add ingredients, reduce. Add, reduce, add, reduce. And that's how you build the flavor. So I'm turning the heat up on that. It's a beautiful thing. This is reducing nicely. Beautiful thing. I've got a little trick I'm going to show you for that if you want to add a little more thickness to it. It's pretty cool. I'm going to do it once I'm done with the flour. All right, let's get to the front chase. So we got the oil in the pan, we got the fond, and uh, we are going to now add some wine. We're going to deglaze with the wine once the pan gets hot enough, and then we're going to do the same thing, stock and butter. And we're almost done with these guys, so let's let this get a little bit more reduced. Anybody have any other questions so far? I don't see any questions, at least on your one page, but we do have Christina Borg with us. Hi, Hi Christina. Christina. Awesome. All right, so, again, I'm doing work just uh, 
or hard to get there, however you want to say it. We've got our water boiling. I've, of course, salted the water going in. We've got Th it all. Thomas Delia, he's a beautiful Eric. You're doing an awesome job. And hey, Tommy. So is Lynn. Of course. Doing great. Uh, we also have Michael Trainer watching. Peace, brother. Good cooking with you the other day, my buddy. It's awesome. All right, look at this. Beautiful. All right, so this pan's hot. You got a little fun. You got that egg in there. We're going with white wine. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. And that's also what Christine, sorry, Sabrina and I are watching. Are you drinking? Drinking. So can you use any other? Yeah. I tend to like to use a dry. So, and again, let the wine reduce. You're going to add immense flavor to your sauces. You can always add more in later. All right. Beautiful. All right. So at this point, I'm adding capers into the piccata, key ingredient. Those are going in. They're salty. They're briny. They're going to help season and uh, really make this a spectacular dish. Uh, Michael asked, uh, he said he missed the beginning, is your stock homemade? Is my stock homemade? Of course it's homemade. But if I didn't happen to have homemade, I, I do buy the unsalted stock in a box. And I got a little trick. If you take a little bit of that and put it in a pot and reduce it down, Again, concentrating flavors, and then add it back in to the boxed chicken stock. It enhances the flavor immensely. So, so, so you just take a little bit of the you have to box. take a cup or two, maybe, or even half the box, and reduce it down to about a cup. Then you add that back into the stock, and it makes your boxed, store-bought stock much more flavorful. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. All right. So these are looking great. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Reducing the wine, what I want to show you is I'm going to dredge the other two pieces of the pork with the flour. Okay, put them in the egg. I'm coming back over. Oh, all right, I'm almost done. Okay. This is way over here. All right, that goes in the egg. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to slow the reducing down just a little bit. All right. These other two are not going to get cooked because I already put wine in the pan. My bad. So we'll save that and I'll cook them another time. This is live television, people. Alright, anyway, look at this, thank you, now, check this out, the next thing I want to add, I'm going to add a little bit more stock, because it reduced quite a bit, I'm going to take this flour, right, take a little butter, and that's the flour you've been dredging everything. Yeah, yeah, which is fine. Let it cook. I know there's been pork in here. Don't panic, people. Completely safe. And I'm putting the butter in the flour. Why is that? Because then I'm going to add it to my pans, and the flour is going to help thicken the sauce. Okay. Ah. Right. So roll the flour, the butter in the flour. Cut a piece off, and I'm going to put it in the pan. Now you just want to swirl the pan. All right, swirl the pan. Get that butter melted. Okay. Nice. It's going to really help thicken. Okay, so those are in. Okay, so, so I missed a few questions. Yes. So, starting with Lisa, did you add salt to the water? Of course. I always add salt to the water. All right, so my before I mix it out, so the wine is reduced, and the next thing that is going in, you get the stock. Okay, 
Turn this up a little bit. Going to rest that in. So these pans right here, this one especially, the marsala with the mushrooms, I'm going to pull some of my pork pieces and I'm going to put them in. Now again, these were just cooked with the, with the seasoned flour and these are just going to kind of soak up some of that sauce. Do a close up of one of those pieces of pork? Sure. So they're the eggless ones. Right, these are the eggless ones. There you go. Okay, nice little color from the flour. And that's simple, that's all I did. Now these are cooking in the sauce. Again, do this with chicken, perfectly fine. I'm going to put the pieces in here as well, and then I'll put the butter in after the fact. So we've got the piccata, we've got the marsala. Going very low oven, so my oven goes down to like 125. I'll put another piece in here. So these two are interchangeable. Same technique on the on the protein. It's a beautiful thing. Put the butter that I have rolled in the flour into my piccata. Excellent. Again, swirl it around. Now, I don't know if you can catch it, but you can see that this sauce is thickened. At least I can see that this sauce is thickened. We'll come around and take a look. Okay. What do you see? This is much more viscous sauce. It's shiny. It's exactly what you want. We'll turn these over, let these cook for a minute or two, and this is done. You can see all the butter. Yep. In there. And all the butter has melted in here and it's thickened the sauce. We're going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. One thing I must do is taste the sauce to make sure it's where I want it to be. Then swirling the pan, getting that butter to emulsify, right? Butter is a fat, mixing with the stock and the wine. I'm going to save that butter for the next one. And again, same thing going on over here. The sauce is thickening. God bless you, Liam. All right. So the question, uh, actually Lisa, Lisa came back with, hey, thanks for the awesome tip on the stock. She had never heard that before. And then from Christina, she said that um, since she's not one to eat flour, could you make a recommendation on something else to use? You can use just the butter. The butter alone will thicken. So I want to show you. So how about when you cook the, cook the pork? Use, uh, you can use... Uh, Actually, you could use a, like a cornstarch. You can use a gluten-free flour. It's it's only a little bit to get a coating. So it's it's. I want to say I hate using the word insignificant ingredient because every ingredient is important. But here I'm going to show you the viscosity. If it holds a line on the spoon, you know you got a thick enough sauce. All right, that is good. I want to add a little salt, a lot of bit of pepper. Okay. Our salad is done. That's a beautiful thing. I'm turning it off. It'll stay hot in the pan. Let's check on our piccata, the capers, the lemon. Again, you can see the sauce is sticking to the pork. Delicious. Nice and tender. I'm going to taste this for lemon because it really should have that pop of lemon in it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Turning it off. Definitely stay hot in here. Now, let's do the final front chase. So we've got the chicken stock is boiling here. We're going to let it go. We're going to uh, do some butter. Same technique. Butter in the flour. I want to get a little bit more in the flour. Don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid of the food, people. Okay. Josh, you're from that area. He says that he's going his wife's doing keto, so he's watching your awesome meal. Let's see if we can call him on this. Nice. I'm going to add these fresh lemon slices to the pan. Absolutely stunning. I'm going to check my pasta. Should be done. Ouch. That's hot. Let's see if I can get a piece of that out. Yeah, beautiful. 
So, we're doing three sauces here. Typically, if you're doing one, you could take the meat out, put your sauce, your pasta in the sauce. We're just going to put this in a nice bowl. Do we have a nice big bowl we can put this in, babe? This is the pasta. How much pasta is it? It's uh, about a pound. Yeah. All right. Uh, unless you want to give me three bowls and I'll put a little bit in each. We've got our butter going in our front chase. Thicken that up. We'll put a little bit of lemon juice in there. Beautiful thing. Hello, Jay. Much love, my friends. Me too, pal. And we also have Mary McRae. What a wonderful broadcast, as usual. Thank you, Mary. All right. We got the pasta in here. We just put a little bit in each bowl. And maybe we'll make each, you know, one bowl with each different sauce. Nice. Beautiful. Better idea. Ideas are always coming. That's the big one. All right, here we go. This is what we're going to do. Get smart about this. We're going to put the pasta in here. Put one in there. We're going to put one in here. That's how I'm going to play. Thank you, dear. All right. First up. Marsala. Let me get these uh, cutlets in here. Mm. That's wine and lemon in this franchise. Beautiful. Okay. This is coming at you. Hot. First thing, we're going to plate up the Marsala. tender I can tell by picking it up very light to gather our sauce and pour that over the top those delicious mushrooms mm. it's amazing that you know with the with the marsala flavors coming through just to even, as I'm pouring it off but the mushrooms a lot of umami in this dish the uh, mushrooms are amazing finishing it off with some of that chopped parsley. So that's dish number one. Pork marsala. Delicious. Make it with chicken. Make it with fish. Sauce is always the same. Delicious. All right. Next item up for bid here on the chef is right. <laughs> chef is always right. Yes, chef. Is the piccata. Again, beautiful dish. The, the lemon capers, wine, absolutely stunning. I'm gonna layer this up. Gorgeous. We got our lemon slices that have been cooked. I love that. A lot of the harsh lemon comes out of it and they're absolutely delicious. One more. And save these on the side for the very top. Get your Sauce on there. Mm, look at that. Capers. Beautiful. All comfort winter foods. We're in for some snow, I think, in the next couple days. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. This would be perfect to make when you're snowed in. Alright. Flip these over. Let me do the parsley on that one. This is almost ready. A little bit of Parsley. Again, it's a garnish, but let me tell you something. It's really uh, adds a lot of flavor. Show you a little garmanger trick. Oh. Cut a little lemon Very slices. Nice. What are you doing with them? Just cut like that. 
Fancy. Fancy. Run back in. Nice. A little parsley on those lemons. Dish number two. Pork piccata. Gotta love it. Love it a lot of that pork piccata. <laughs> All right. And the final dish. I'm gonna come back over for a quick look at this. Okay. This is ready. I think what I want to do is I want to mount it with a little bit more butter just to thicken up the sauce. So I'm going to take the cutlets out. I'm going to put them on. Mmm, this looks good. Dinner for three. You know what? This is actually uh, thick enough. So we're going to go. But if you wanted it thicker, what would you do? You can, you can put a little bit more uh, butter. Remember, I rolled the butter in the flour because the flour and the butter begin to emulsify. Beautiful idea. Works like a charm. And the final... Mm, parsley. And here, here are all my compliments from Bobby Thomas. What I want to do is also... Yeah. Typically, we'll, we'll, I'll we'll taste. What are your compliments? <laughs> I want to uh, just put a little salt on top because I know it's going to need it. And why do you sprinkle salt from so high up? So everything is highly seasoned. Mm -hmm. That old gag. This way, you get it spreads out. If you do it low, you get you, you're in danger of putting too much salt in one spot. You do it high, it rains on top. It's a beautiful thing. And. Here we go, like so. That, that. Beautiful sauces. You're gonna have to pardon me as I take pictures. Is that okay? Oh, that's great. The producer isn't happy with that. Oh no no no, I'm good. I'll I'll, I'll read my compliments from Bobby Thomas. Please. Lynn is the sous vide chef, camera person, director, guinea pig, producer, and does a fantastic job. Eric, yes. Eric isn't isn't too bad either. Why, gee, thanks. Nice. These are fantastic. And so you can see that, you know, uh, with a little bit of planning, you can really, you know, pull out all the stops. And again, just do one of these, and it's just fantastic. It, it doesn't take long to cook. The, the sauces, again, lemon and stock are the common denominators. You got mushroom, one has capers, one has marsala wine. And you know what? There's no rules in the kitchen. My kitchen, no rules. So you can mix and match all this. I could, would tell you to do one with lemon, wine, marsala wine, white wine, capers, butter, stock. You know, do a hybrid. Have fun in the kitchen. That's what it's all about. Having fun in the kitchen. So I am going to grab my plate. Because I got a taste. You know, you know how we do. We got a taste. I would like a new fork. Pardon me. Being off camera. Alright. Gonna go with a piece of the Marsala. Mm. A couple mushrooms. Terry Ann says they look amazing. Lisa mm -hmm. Pashoda, I'm so hungry now. Nice. So Lisa, you could go out and make this for dinner since it's early there for you. Yeah, and I mean really the, the protein is really almost the only thing I had to pick up was the protein. Um, I have, you know, typically I always have eggs. I always have uh, lemons. Alright. So a little bit more parsley. We, we do we, we do have a very well stocked pantry. Well, you know what? You're only as good as the ingredients you have. I wish you I wish you guys could smell how amazing All right. it smells in here. First one I'm gonna check the Marsala. Should have like uh, you should really taste the Marsala wine, really tender. Pork is cooked through. Mm. The flour creates this amazing coating. Really delicious. Maybe could have used a little more marsala wine, but
but it's very good. I love it. All right, piccata next. A little bit of capers. Mm. Over the top. Those capers pack a punch. So be careful. Um, some people don't like capers, so I like to put them in whole. This way someone could pick them off instead of chopping them up. But really lemony, absolutely delicious. And I think this is my favorite with, with the egg batter. Lisa thinks we should go through our pantry on one of our episodes. Okay. That means i got to clean it. Well, I think you should just show them your uh, spice cabinet. So here is the franchise. Mm. The egg brings a whole different dimension to it. Absolutely stunning. Really beautiful. Another great thing you can do on a weeknight is uh, make this. Again, do it with chicken if it's easier for you to do. The key is pound it nice and thin, about a quarter inch. Um, you don't want to do it with like a whole chicken breast, you know. Pound it out. Um, and that technique of creating the fond, deglazing the pan with Marsala wine, with white wine, or with lemon juice, you know, deglaze the pan, get all those bits up. Reduce that initial liquid before you add your stock. You add the stock in, you let the stock reduce a little bit. You're gonna put the, the cutlets back in and you're gonna put in the butter that you rolled around in flour, it's gonna help thicken it. And then taste the sauce, final seasoning, finish it with parsley. And you've got yourself an incredible meal. So in 45 minutes you made three. May I have the salad please? So you made three different. Yes, has it been 45 minutes or only? Seems yeah. like 10. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just address the salad. Hello, salad. Um, oh that old gag. Um, and again, this is a simple oil, vinegar, oregano, a little garlic, uh, granulated garlic, red wine vinegar I used. So beautiful, a little salt in there. It's a pretty hefty dressing because of the um, because of the acid from the vinegar, but it's really simple. I go to we go to this place here in Jersey, the Belmont Tavern. It's an amazing old school Italian chicken Savoy, chicken Murphy, long hot peppers just fried and lots of bread and they serve us this salad. And it's like the best salad you're ever going to have. Um, typically for me the best salad is the salad someone else makes because I don't really like making salad. But the salads that I do make are very simple. I do the arugula with the lemon juice and the shaved Reggiano Parmesan and a little olive oil. Amazing. That's, and a, this, that's a five minute salad. Yeah, that's a five minute salad. And this as well. Just mixed it up in here, shook it up, and uh, and that's it. So we're going to have that. And so I am going to continue to eat this meal. I want to thank you guys again for joining me on The Grateful Chef. Good things are coming. I've got meetings to hopefully make the good things come. And uh, we're going to continue to do this. Please. Please contribute to the group, what you're right making for dinner, what you had for dinner, if you had an amazing meal at a restaurant, everything is totally fair game. Um, if you have questions. Yeah, any questions them. you can ask, private message me, email me at thegratefulchefee at gmail.com. Any questions, um, any uh, ideas, public appearances, uh, you Disney. name it. Yeah. yeah, visiting, you want to come be here, part of the studio audience, uh, please, you know, just reach out and we'll do it, everything in our power to make it happen. And um, that's it. I'm going to bid you guys good night. Be well, eat well, be kind, be super kind. And we will see you next week on Cooking in the Kitchen, the Grateful Chef Kitchen with Eric Eisenbutt. Peace.